In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn your fashion drapes into professional digitized patterns using Adobe Illustrator. The first thing you're going to need is a rigid measuring tool. I'm using this cutting mat with an 18 by 24 grid, but you can use any plain ruler or an L square. Next, you're going to place your patterns on top and in frame so that you can take a picture. And once you do that, you're going to hop into Adobe Illustrator and create a new document. I'm going to rename the document to corset top, and then I'm going to change the size of the artboard to something a little bigger before I click create. Once I'm in the workspace, I'm going to drag and drop my photo into my document then i'm going to create a rectangle the same size as my cutting mat which is 24 by 18. this is going to allow me to shrink my picture to the exact size so that we are working to scale this is probably the most important part so be sure to take your time i changed the color of the rectangle so it's a little bit more visible and made the line a little bit more bold by increasing the stroke Zoom in if you need to to get the corners exactly matched up with that rectangle. And again, take your time. We want this to be spot on. Once you have your picture to scale, we want to get rid of that rectangle and then we're going to lower the opacity to 50% of that picture. This is going to make it easier for us to trace over the pattern. I'm creating a second layer and locking that first layer with the picture so that it doesn't move. Next, I'm going to take the pen tool and I am going to start tracing over the seam lines that we have on the drape. Remember, just the seam lines, not the outer edge or the seam allowance. Take your time with this and use the anchors to get around all of those curves. Repeat this process for the remainder of your pattern pieces. Next, I'm going to smooth out all of my rigid points. I'm going to do that by clicking the direct select tool and pulling on that little circle. It's going to round out that point. I'm also going to fine tune some of the lines that I missed and to do so I'm going to click the buttons shift C to bring out the anchor points. Now I'm just rearranging the pattern so that they are in the same orientation that I would sew them in. This is just a helpful tool that makes it easier for me to visualize what seams connect to what. But speaking of helpful tools, I want to introduce you to the sponsors of today's video, Craftsy. Craftsy is an online community and resource for millions of crafters, makers, and DIY enthusiasts find creative inspiration and advance their skills. They offer over 2,000 classes in over 20 categories like crocheting, knitting, quilting, sewing, and many more. As a member, you'll have access to their live streaming tutorials where their experienced instructors share their tips, answers questions, and engages with the Craftsy community in real time. And boy, do I have good news for you because the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description box below will receive a full year of premium membership to Craftsby for just $1.49. $1.49. In today's economy, that's like basically free. <laughs> so nonetheless, thank you so much Craftsby for sponsoring this video and now back to the tutorial. The next thing we're going to do is true our seams. This means double checking that our seams are the same length. For straight lines like this one, it's super easy. You can literally just place one next to the other, use the rotate tool if needed, and adjust where there are any discrepancies. But for curved lines, you'll want to walk your seam a little bit more carefully. To do so, you'll want to zoom in and place your rotation origin point where the seams overlap. Then you'll want to select a pattern piece and rotate it until you reach the bottom of the seam, making sure that the lines stay overlapped. Once you reach the end of your seam, you can evaluate which pattern piece needs to be adjusted. From there, you can edit your style line so that there's a nice transition from pattern piece to pattern piece. The next thing I'm going to do is open up libraries and paste my brand's standard labels. This template includes all the annotations and lines that I use to mark my pattern pieces. Each brand is different, but if you're interested in using the exact ones I use, I'll leave the link for you to download below in the description. Nonetheless, I'm going to select my pattern pieces by dragging the selection tool over them, and then I'm going to use the eyedropper to select my brand standard seam line. Next, I'm going to add the seam allowance, and to do so, I'm going to select the pattern again. Then I'm going to click on Object, Path, Offset Path. Then I'm going to offset by half an inch and then click OK. The next thing I'm going to do is select all of my seam allowances. Then I'm going to use my eyedropper like before and select my brand standard, which is just a dotted line. 
And from there, I'm going to add my grain lines to all of my pattern pieces. To adjust, I'm going to use the direct selection tool and just drag the points so that they stretch across the entire pattern. This is super helpful, especially when you're working with fabrics that are stripes or a specific print. You want to make sure that everything is aligned how it should be. From there, I'm going to copy and paste all of my pattern labels. This label typically includes my logo, the pattern name, the pattern piece name, the size, uh, the cut ticket, and then sometimes I'll also leave the seam allowance, especially if I'm working with someone else on this project. You'll want to repeat this process for the remainder of your pattern pieces. I know some pattern pieces get really small and the text can be interrupted by some of the lines or the grain line. And so to fix this, I just use a rectangle filled with white and I just place it over the grain line so that I can center all of my text. This makes it a little bit easier for us to read as we work with our pattern pieces. Continue this until all of your patterns are labeled. The next thing we're going to do is add notches to our pattern pieces. To do so, we're going to walk our pattern like we did before, and then we're going to use the pen tool to create little lines. I usually go in about a quarter of an inch if my seam allowance is a half an inch, and then I change the color to red so that it's a little easier to see. Lastly, I'm going to type out a few more annotations like the center front and center back so that it's easily visible for when we cut these out in fabric. This next step is not necessary necessary for all pattern pieces, but I find it extremely helpful, especially in corset making. I'm going to use Adobe's new feature called the dimension tool to measure out the length of each seam. For straight lines, all you have to do is click and drag, or you can click from one point to another and drag and it'll give you the length of that line. But I know a lot of us are going to be working with curvy lines, so I'm going to use the direct selection tool and I'm going to select the seam that I am going to be measuring. Then I'm going to join these lines by right clicking and clicking join and then from there I'm going to open up my document info panel. If you don't see it, it should be under window and then document info. Next you want to click the hamburger icon and select the tab labeled objects. This is going to give you some information about the object that you have selected and when you click on the seam line it's going to give you the length of that curved line versus the standard width and height that it gives in the properties panel. Then I'm just going to use the text tool to type out the length of that seam and then I'm going to go up to object and expand to expand that text making it easier for me to rotate onto that seam. The next thing I'm going to do is change the color so that it's more visible and then I'm just going to repeat this process for the remainder of my curved seams. You can see in this next one for the princess seam over the bust how significantly larger the line actually is versus what is in the properties panel. Lastly, I'm going to get this artboard ready for printing. To do so, I'm going to delete all of my template except for this left corner and this corner includes my brand name, the pattern name, and then the size that I am working in and then also underneath it gives scale indications so that when I go to print this I can double check that it's printed at the right size. It's super simple to make these scale boxes. All you have to do is click the rectangle tool and I'm just going to type in 2 inches by 2 inches. You can use centimeters, you could do 1 inch, you could do 12 inches. It truly is up to you but I'm going to use 2 inches and you can see it is the exact size that I have already in the template. And from there I'm just going to group all of my pattern pieces so that nothing gets misplace and then I'm going to shrink the artboard so that we don't consume a whole bunch of paper and we're good to go. This is just a demo so I don't have all the notches that I would like on these pattern pieces but hopefully you learned something new and these steps can help you as you digitize your patterns at home. But if you learned something new in this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you want to know how to sew this corset leave me a comment. <laughs> but as always happy sewing and I will see you in